So welcome to another episode. I have a very special guest. His name is Merul and you probably haven't heard of him but he is actually the youngest mentor in the history of Google Summer of Code which is pretty cool actually. And he also makes Udemy courses and stuff. <laughs> so let's welcome Merul. How are you doing brother? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Let's just r- get right to the topic. So like how did you achieve what you have right now? It was a uh, through a series of increments shall I say. I started to learn to code when I was in 7th. I started with Java which uh, if any if anyone is familiar with programming they would know that it's a hell of a mistake starting with Java <laughs> as, as your first language. So I got quite disheartened very quickly and then after that I left it for some other language which happened to be C++. It's not really known to be beginner friendly especially when it comes to pointers and stuff. So again I felt disheartened and I left that. Mm-hmm. So in ninth grade is when things really started to take off for me. Sorry in eighth grade rather. I started to participate in certain contests not necessarily directly linked to programming since I was a lot into PC hardware. So I participated in certain quizzes about general awareness of uh, of software and hardware related to computers and I started to win them. Now the next step which I had in my mind was to obviously develop my own software. That's when I got into Linux and uh, more into the world of programming. Then I participated in a few programming contests, a few hackathons and then I started to win them first at an inter-school level and then the biggest change for me came in the form of ID8 for India. It was a contest by Intel Government of India National E-Governance Division and uh, uh, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So I was a finalist for that. I went to the Delhi boot camp and that is where things really changed for me. Earlier, I I had zero confidence in my skill about anything. And then at that point, I was fairly certain that I can make some apps. So after that bootcamp was over, I participated in Google Code In. in and I ended up being a winner in 2019 and 20. And after that, I got involved with the organization and that happened to be Liquid Galaxy project. So Liquid Galaxy was started initially by Google under the Google Streets division. And then later it was made an open source project under Google. So I got greatly involved with them, networked with them. I know quite a bit of people there. I know the administrator for Liquid Galaxy quite well. So that is what I would consider a real turning point since after that I have had a series of opportunities just come towards my way and one of them happened to be Google Summer of Code. So I was an unofficial trainee mentor in Google Summer of Code 2020 where I was mentoring the, the participants alongside the organization's official mentors but I was nowhere in go- on Google's records because at that time I was 17 and Google Summer of Code's terms of service require uh, someone to be 18 years old at least. So I could unfortunately not be an official mentor at that time. But then 2021 came and here we are. That is one crazy journey. And I did take part in uh, Google Code in the same year as you, I think, 2019-20. And it was pretty fun even though I barely do any coding actually. <laughs> So I just did the other task, but it was pretty fun. And all right. So now that you are a mentor, you have a very big responsibility of choosing which uh, candidate is good for your organization, right? Yes. So how would you do that? Like if I come to you, so what would you ask me? And basically, what do you want me to have? Like, What qualities do you want me to have? So speaking from just one year of experience, of course, it's extremely tiny compared to the other mentors that uh, the amazing mentors that I've worked with. So basically this year, my role was rather marginal in the grand scheme of things. But Mm -hmm. basically what we had was a record and it was not like 
a single person makes the decision it's a collective decision which is made by all the mentors and especially the org admin is particularly involved in these decisions so passing and failing is totally up to the mentors no involvement of the org org admin i mean there is certain parts of involvement but like it's mostly up to the mentor and uh speaking of the application process the students who are selected actually approach the organizations two or three months prior to go- when google uh, like opens the applications up they get involved with the organization so that when that student is chosen the organization does not have to go through that whole uh, process where you need to familiarize right. the person with all the people who are in the team and uh, the whole briefing that can totally be skipped so good students make it convenient for the organization and mentors to be accepted as students and that right. is something which i saw was particularly lacking in in a lot of the applications interesting so when you say approach the organization so like were they working on their software like open source software whichever they have yes at the end of the day these are all open source projects and the goal behind google summer of code is to engage students participating and contributing towards making open source software great so following the whole ethos of this contest all the good candidates usually approach 2 to 3 months in advance or some even a year in advance like a lot of the participants as far as i can see they have a, a, a lot of the participants which are serious they approach a few months or a few weeks in advance and they it usually works for them since they are the ones who are selected it's easier to trust someone you already know right and right. who have already proven that that they are able to code something and their claims yeah. of about their skills are correct and not dubious it's super simple to prove that when you know the person but it is not the case when you're just reviewing applications right. you can't really tell that from one interview that you probably get per student before selecting them that's a really good point okay so what languages are usually used in these because i i really don't know i haven't done anything i just know python <laughs> that Language. really depends on a per project basis like a lot of open source organizations would have code written in certain languages they would have certain pre-existing technical debt already tied to that program so it really depends on what organization are you applying to and what their needs are so for example let's say an organization needs a companion app made obviously you get to choose what language you want to code that app in or if they need a new feature set and their and all of their code base is already in let's say c then there's no getting around that so when they're actually taking you in for the internship like do they already expect you to know that language or maybe that will probably be in your yes the application you sent yes uh we already expect that the student is familiar so for example as a part of the screening process there are certain prerequisites that students need to uh fulfill for example right. in our case it was successfully installing and managing a liquid galaxy instance now i think it's worth pointing out what liquid galaxy is in this case so yeah. a liquid galaxy setup is like a cluster of screens which works together seamlessly uh so instead of being connected by wires or hdmi cables you can connect them over wifi and they would all uh, work seamlessly so that's what the liquid galaxy project is about providing a panoramic experience for screens without cables so uh okay so that's about liquid galaxy so f- for example a prerequisite was one of the prerequisites was that the student has to create a vm instance of liquid galaxy physical instance if they have access to multiple machines and a very interesting point is that the documentation that we had worked on through google coden is actually the one which is being used right now for liquid galaxy so there's a good chance that some work that i would have done would actually be in work right now yes there is a chance for, yeah i worked for this organization called sisters open source uh s y s t e r s right sisters yeah S-S. yeah sisters anita p dot o r yeah anita um, yeah i know and i was almost a finalist so. <laughs> but yeah you were in the top 20 i guess i think i was in the top 10 uh yeah. 
No, they had top 20. I don't remember. It's been a while. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know stuff. And so if I want to do something like, what is your top advice for me? Experiment the hell out of anything <laughs> you want to do. So, for example, I have always had this attitude of wherever I get a new piece of electronics or I look at anything, I unscrew it and look at its internals. My parents used to get mad at it, but now they've just grown used to it. That any new piece of electronics they'll buy for me, they should be 100% certain that I would 100% disassemble it and <laughs> check its <laughs> internals. So now I'm fortunate enough that I can buy things for myself. But earlier when they got me my laptop, I disassembled it and then uh, my SSD wasn't working. And then after that, I figured it out on my own how what I did wrong. I basically had it unplugged accidentally. <laughs> so my number one advice is always to experiment and try to learn by messing up. That's, That's awesome. the way I've always done it. So for example, in uh, Linux, I have broken my kernel so many times just because of this that now, uh, now I don't even trust myself that uh, my Arch install would last. So what I have done is I have set an, uh, I have set up another VM on top of my hypervisor, which I use for all of this tinkering now. I don't know why it, I never did that earlier. It's it's almost you obvious from experience, right? Yeah, that is awesome, man. Yeah, and so you said that the candidates who are like actual serious and good at this stuff, they approach the organization a few months before. Who do they approach? Like, if I want, should I approach you or just? No, just get involved in the community. And once you have one or two commits to prove your skill, that's kind of enough already. And you can start okay. talking with the organization. Most organizations have a Google Coden page before Google, uh, sorry, not Google Coden, Google Summer of Code page before Google officially announces them. And they already list what they want. Right. So just search, right. search up for that and contact them. They'll usually have an email. Kids out there listening, that's what you gotta do. And okay, this one thing I do want to touch up upon is that in India, at least, there is a lot of toxic environment regarding, you see, first IITJ, and <laughs> then you have, like, just, like, so many, I, would, I don't want to call out anyone, but you, you see, there are a lot of people just kind of making a big fuss about, you should do this, you have to do that, and just like they stress children out uh, during their 11th and 12th, they're doing the exact same thing once they're in college. So... You are the kind of person I know that who does not believe in such bullshit, right? Yes, I am openly against it. I hate the concept of IITs. So, uh, let's say that someone is actually being influenced or well, we all are being influenced by these things. The pressure and the stuff going all around. Do you have any advice as in how to just think with your mind as in what you want to do and you're not being forced to do Well... What I would say is do what you're passionate about. So when I was in sixth, uh, or rather since second grade, I used to be huge into astronomy. I've actually written a book about it. Uh, I was kind of, I don't have the title, but the youngest author in science and technology at that point at age 13. So Holy <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> So that was something I was super passionate about. And after that, well, things changed, life happened. And then I went big into software. Yeah. And here I am right now. So just follow your passion. At the end of the day, it's, uh, it's something that you'll have to probably live with uh, your entire life. Your profession is something that, uh, whether you like it or not, is a major, major part of your life. Do not let someone else influence this decision of yours. It's a key decision in your life. Society would pressurize you till uh, how long? 12 years, let's assume from 1st to 12th, you're being pressurized. But damn, if you fall into that pressure, your life is spoiled for, what, 35 to 40 years of your working career? Yep. 
and then if you're not happy when you're retired you're just like i should have done that yeah man. and then you make good whatsapp uncles out of yourself <laughs> <laughs> we got a spam good morning you know yeah <laughs> we got a spam good morning you know okay so what are your thoughts on stuff like competitive coding and just other things which are just blowing up on the internet So basically I recently joined a social network for HR managers it's called LinkedIn it's like Facebook for HR guys and and there I recently discovered that competitive programming has quite struck it big in loops so a lot of these students who are in college or uh who are let's say in uh who are currently looking for employment in this industry they have in their bios like i read their titles they were like three star in code chef five star in hacker rank i have no idea what these terms mean honestly i'm not sure if one star is supposed to be good or five star but never mind so what i absolutely hate about it is that these people are obsessing over something which in the end does not give them anything good in return competitive uh-huh. programming is only good unless uh, un- unless until unless you want to get into some job which requires heavily on data science and algorithm which most don't unless you want to get into fang or something but let's be realistic they aren't going to land up in fang as their first jobs right most programming related jobs would be f- full stack or front end or uh, something which is uh, more towards the web app side rather than let's say something right. which is dsa dependent like you know what that means data science and algorithms thank you <laughs> so what i really hate about these peddlers of bullshit which uh, which <laughs> advocate super super hard for uh, these websites like hacker rank and stuff is that they don't uh, say that it's it's for practice they kind of turn it into a, an unhealthy and a toxic sort of competition where uh, it's a flexing match between how many stars you have just like je yes exactly just like je and to be honest i don't even think that hacker rank and code chef are good especially code chef is particularly garbage <laughs> I have proper beef against Code Chef since one of my friends he he's in uh, a famous college I won't name it but basically uh, what it's a fa- it's a famous government college what they're doing is absurd it's a it's like a first year government college in engineering I won't give out any further details yeah so what they're doing is that they have outsourced their only important part of a CSE degree to an academy so uh, they aren't teaching programming they are not teaching programming to the students they are teaching physics chemistry and maths and programming is up to an academy to teach them god <laughs> and an academy has this access of code chef and what not and he needed some help with one with a problem and then although the problem uh, so basically like code chef just crashed when i tried to submit the answer it was dumb yeah i i had never even heard of code chef to be honest and it is by an academy so well an academy makes rather mediocre content anyways and they are into that whole iit spiel yeah yeah okay guys one thing the thoughts of this podcast are both just our thoughts so don't sue us and <laughs> just know that it's our thoughts it's just yeah just keep that in mind Continue. Yes, allegedly. <laughs> you aren't speaking to us. <laughs> um, uh, sure. Okay. So competitive programming is only good if you use it for practice. If it turns into that uh, toxic flexing of how many stars you have, then it's useless. Since let's be honest, how many good programmers have you seen? who actively flex their stars on hacker rank or code chef let's say name one good programmer i've never seen linus stovels come on stage and say yo i have six stars on hacker rank what's <laughs> your score linus is kind of a hero man 
Yes, he is. He is. That guy made Git as a part-time project in two weeks. Amazing guy. Yeah. Even his office. He's like a funny guy when he's actually not even trying to be funny. That's his actual life. Yeah, he has uh, a PC and his cat is there. And he says that yeah. he doesn't want his PC to be super powerful, but he does want it to be super quiet. Yeah, he's like, when, when the cat is near me, I want to hear the cat, not the yep. fans. Yep, yep. Yeah, he was like, I'm obsessed with quietness. Silence, and, you mean? And then, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, silence. Yes, that's the word. And like, once he was showing the uh, image of his office in one of a TED talk he was doing, and it's just a small room, just like mine and yours. And he's just standing on a desk and it's a clutter everywhere and he's working and you think you would expect him to have like a, I don't know, what's it, a hacker cave or something. <laughs> but no, he's like really down That to guy it. is super humble and, and super, super nice. Yeah. Great guy. So no my point it. is that no one who's good actively flexes their hacker rank stars. It's mostly amateurs who do that. And the problem is that these amateurs, whether it be in any industry, they are the most toxic fan base that you'll ever come across. Let's be honest. I have never met a pro who's toxic. I've never met a, a total beginner who's toxic. It's always these amateurs which live under the illusion of being super good who are really, really toxic. Man, you're going to hurt some people. <laughs> I mean, he means no harm. Yeah, just get out of this whole toxic culture of uh, of flexing hacker rank stars. They mean nothing. And lead code is way better than hacker rank if if you just want to practice DSA, that is. I recently also checked out Algo Expert, the infamous course. That's also really good. Yeah, I've seen ads for it. Yeah, I actually bought the ML Expert, AI Expert, Sys Expert, sorry. Uh, Algo expert, sys, sys admin expert or sys expert and ML expert. That's the courses they have. I bought all three. They were like on a bundle deal or something. And I only have good things to say about that so far. Really great practice questions and uh, really good crash course also. That's something that I would recommend instead of hacker rank. Although it's paid, there's a barrier barrier of entry to it. But it is good in the end. You can use hacker rank, just don't make it toxic. And don't make yeah, it a competition. Yeah, I mean, their questions are all right. And they have quite a bit of questions, to be honest. Quite a bit. Yeah. At the end of the day, it matters how good you are. So it's just... I mean, I practice. don't really have anything against hacker rank. I have, I have a lot of things to say about the community, though. Especially the ones who are promoting that toxic competition. It's supposed to be a place to practice... Yeah. I mean, as far as I see it. It it used to be called Interview Street earlier, though. So <laughs> I guess the toxicity kind of originates I mean, from the... Toxic, it's just the name, it's fine. Sorry? I mean, it's just the name, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, but after the whole YC thing with them, it, it was it's pretty good of a platform. If you just use it for practicing and not flexing, I'd say. The yeah. whole toxic culture is just... I mean, just get out of that, the toxic culture, because it's not good for your health as well. Just yeah, saying. just toxic culture in general. Avoid it. Yeah. And thank you again, Merul, for coming. No worries, dude. The, pre the pleasure was all mine. And you can find all socials and links to Merul and all the wonderful things he does in the description. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you in the next one.